next in Trinidad and Tobago in the energy sector? So it's, I think, a really exciting time. We need to collectively own a vision and a plan and know these are the pathways that are going to get us there. I think that Trinidad and Tobago is poised to play another major global role in another transition. Hi guys, welcome to our podcast. Today we are very, very lucky and fortunate to have Giselle Thompson, who's the Corporate Communications Manager there at BP in Trinidad. Are you Corporate Communications? Did I get it right? Corporate Operations. <laughs> Co corporate, corporate Operations. Corporate Manager. Operations. And, uh, you know, Giselle is from Trinidad and Tobago, and we are very, very proud to have a fellow Trinidadian at that level in BP. Giselle, welcome. Thank you, Sean. My pleasure to join you. Really, really appreciate you being here. And Giselle, you know, there are so many of our viewers are always asking and talking about the energy transition and you have a company like BP that's come from a legacy of oil and gas yep. but we have this whole thrust to move the way away from this whole carbon dependency. Yep. What is happening at BP to transition into a new greener energy? Right. So it's I think a really exciting time because BP like most other multinational energy companies yes traditional oil and gas but moving to be an energy producer right. in the wider sense of that, that word energy so it's very exciting because we know that hydrocarbons and particularly gas and first in Trinidad, gas right. will continue to have a very important role to play in the energy transition but it's the pathway there to then help us then continue to make investments in other things in hydrogen in renewables in carbon capture and storage and in, in ways to decarbonize our traditional fossil fuels right while also bringing newer forms of energy into the energy mix so I think it's quite an interesting and exciting time yeah. to be in energy because we have all this legacy and history of producing energy Correct. Um, that we're building on as we look forward. You know, as somebody was today, I think it was Claire was saying, you know, it's an and conversation, right? We know gas will remain really important in the transition right? and it provides for us the foundation that we can then continue to build and invest in new and cleaner forms of energy. You know, and I'm really happy you talked about that innovation, right? Right? Because a lot of times there's a conversation that takes place around technology and there's a yeah. conversation that takes place around energy. But a lot of times we are not having a conversation to say, hey, technology is probably what's going to lead the energy transition. Because in order for us to really get off uh, oil and gas and go towards cleaner forms of energy, there's a huge amount of innovation that takes place. Yeah. And you know, as a young young people, when they typically think about entering the energy industry, they think about the traditional rules as an operator or as a or as a petroleum engineer or something else like that. But it's a huge role for innovation and technology to play in developing the new technologies that will lead towards those new forms of energy. Yeah. What is You're BP's right. role do you see in that? And what is BP doing to incentivize that type of technology to help in that transition? Yeah, so I think there's two things, right? There's technology and then there's skills. So absolutely, I think technology, we are seeing leaps and bounds in terms of just new technologies to both, like I said, help us be able to operate with fewer emissions. Right. Um, completely new green technologies that allow us to produce energy with no emissions. How we're continuing to invest in that, in, uh, invest in little startups um, right. that BP is doing globally, right? Through right. our ventures business um, and help these startups scale really interesting and innovative things that they're doing. And then there's skills. Like a, a lot of uh, people in our industry think, am I going to have this skill set for the future if I'm an engineer, if yes. I'm a project manager? The great news is that a lot of those skills are transferable. Correct. So whether you're an HR person, whether you're a finance or, or commercial person, yeah. whether I'm project managing a, a large scale offshore project, right. oil and gas, or offshore wind, it's the exact same skill set that I need, right? Oh, in terms of modeling in terms of project management skills so i think it's uh for young people too it's being less fearful about are my energy skills going to be useful right. they absolutely are it is also then how do i build on that how do i develop my digital skill sets um you know how do i continue to grow and learn right. and just be hungry to grow and learn? because that retooling i think you know again it's a transition in skills as much as a, a transition in you know uh, in energy right. and we've seen uh people even from trinidad who used to run out projects hey oil and gas projects they're running out wind projects really yeah, in the u.s wow so uh, you know there are lots of people who are proving it can be done 
Well, hopefully we'll get one of them, one of them on our podcast. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we will. I'll, I'll hook you up. <laughs> yeah, but but it's so. It, I, I hear you talk about digital skills, and, and and that's such a huge thing. And I think our young people they really understand that. But I'm so happy to hear you as a as an energy executive talk about that because I think that sometimes we see that disconnect. Yeah. People don't understand that those digital skills are what we are a key part of what we need to move and transition into into greener energy. You know, we're here in uh, in Trinidad in Trinidad for the energy conference. It's our first uh, first time back yeah. out physically in two years post pandemic. Yep. How, what, what would you say has happened inside of BP because of the pandemic? How are you guys working differently? Uh, what advice would you give to university graduates, young people who are coming out? Uh, because I feel like people who are entering the world of work post pandemic, it's a completely it's, different world. It's so different, right? Pandemic, yeah. yeah. You know, in a sense, the pandemic was a gift because I think it taught us the ways of working and collaborating that right. we had not thought about before. Right. So for me, what was really great about it is that because, you know, working virtually became common, I got to interact with colleagues across the globe in a way right. that I would not have before because gotcha. you think I need to sit in an office in a conference room and be able to talk. But no, we can actually chat and interact and engage much more broadly right. and much more globally. Um, so I think it taught us new ways of working flexibly, you know, how to get the best out of our people, right. um, how to learn to collaborate differently. And I think those are things and skills that we're going to keep, you know, gotcha. take that forward. No, 100 percent. And I, I agree with you totally. I feel like uh, one of the challenges that I've seen on that side, though, is that I feel like for those of us who've been in the organizations for a long time and we understand it, it was easier for us to make that transition. But like yes. for a young university graduate yes. coming out, there is a bit of a disadvantage, you, I, I, I would say, in terms of not having those cooler talks with their senior executives Correct. and doing that, being able to mentor and so on. But at the same time, maybe there's opportunity there as well. Yeah. Um, but it's true, I, but I, I would agree. I mean, I, I feel, um, you know, for, for someone joining a company for the first time right. and to spend their first year sort of at home and online, how right. do you create that connection? And I think that's why it's important now that we're getting back to some you know, normalcy. Um, to embrace that, right? That yes, there's a time and a place for that virtual working, but it's, it does not ever, you know, um, compete with the face-to-face. Okay. -face, yeah. Um, carving the time out to, um, you know, make space in your diary uh, for that one-on-one -on -one connection. Correct. You know. Correct. So I think yeah, it's important to embrace both, you know, the virtual as well as knowing when it you need to invest in building the relationship at that human level. Gotcha. Because um, you can't do that, yes, over a Teams call. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's very, very different. Very different. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and you know, as we as we look to wrap up here now, you know, uh, a lot of talk about Trinidad and Tobago, uh, some optimism, maybe some pessimism, but a lot of uh, uncertainty. I think yeah. a, a lot of the population they're not quite sure exactly what's going to happen over the next few years. We've always been, you know, an energy stalwart, an energy giant. We have such a huge legacy and a history of oil and gas. Uh, and we've always been at the uh, forefront, I would say. We led the, one of the biggest gas transitions in the world. You know, we came from an oil producing economy yep. and we became a gas producing economy. What's next at Trinidad and Tobago in the energy sector? I think what's next, like I was saying, I think it is an exciting time that I think collectively, all of us in the industry, we we know that you know the transition is important and right. we need to get ahead of that and, and really make pace at progressing the Trinidad and Tobago agenda. I mean I feel really confident because I know you know we're sitting here with you know great talent right. you know so much expertise and know-how you know really strong upstream operators downstream operators service companies who have been around who know this industry so well right. But I think we, you know, we have all the ingredients of what it takes to really navigate that transition ahead of us. I think what's important, we're hearing that today in the conference is, you know, we need to collectively kind of own a vision and a plan and know these are the pathways that are going to get us there. Right. But I'm excited by everything we're hearing, you know, um, you know, the, the solar project that we hope is coming soon, you know, yeah. the hydrogen economy and the possibilities that brings potential for offshore wind, you know, along with we have a really good gas business. We need to just keep that gas business going, right. you know, so whether that's more deep water exploration, whether that's how do we develop, you know, cross border gas resources and bring that into markets. I think, you know, there's still a lot of opportunity we're sitting on. 
and we can't be complacent or, or become despondent. You know, right. I think we have the ingredients to make it happen. It just takes us all working together. I, I think you're right, and you know what I tell people? Like, I, I don't think anybody, any one of us, could predict exactly what's going to happen. But uh, I always tell people that I feel like you, you could never dismiss Trinidad and Tobago. When you look at the skill set we have, the, the quality of the professionals we have, the quality of the companies, the, the service companies, and our, our especially our energy service sector. Yeah. I think that Trinidad and Tobago is poised to play another major global role in another transition. Whether that means a transition that uses uh, gas as a as a transition fuel, but eventually going to hydrogen or, or, or anything else, I really think that the people of Trinidad and Tobago will certainly play a leading role in creating that new energy industry. I think we will, you yeah. know, we will. And, um, you know, we've, we've managed one transition, like you said, yeah. from oil to gas. Yeah. Our challenge is now manage that next transition, you know, from gas to, you know, a cleaner energy future. And I think um, we can do it. We have a lot of great talents. And and, and, and there's a ton of people who probably enter university today or graduated yeah. from university who will be part of that transition. Yeah. Hopefully, there'll be companies like BP or in Ram. Let's well, hope. We'd Absolutely. Love to have some of them. Uh, thank you so much, Giselle. We it's really been a pleasure chatting with you, Sean. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. And you have a good day. All the you best. You too. Take care. All right.